Hello and welcome Grant. This is my somewhat delayed video regarding the news that CDPR plans to remove Crate uh, from non-arena game modes in the next patch. And I suppose Crate wasn't the most popular uh, mechanic that got introduced. But we also have to realize that uh, card games do have an inherent randomness to them and uh, the level of randomness you're comfortable with is definitely a preference. And uh, randomness exists to provide variety so the matches don't feel the same uh, all the time but too much randomness is bad because we do want the games to matter and too much randomness can make them uh, pointless <clears throat> now I personally believe the biggest problem with crates well I do personally somewhat liking it myself is the fact that it has a big power gap between the low end and the high end of the results you can have. You can just uh, RNG into some insane cards uh, or just some weak cards. And this is mainly a thing because you can get some niche cards that are just extremely good in some situations that you wouldn't put in your deck otherwise. Like, uh, or you might just put in your deck but you get an extra one. Like, for example, you get a Veta Counter and you're just Ragnarok. Like, whoa, that's insane. Or you just get play an Alvin Scout and you get a Breed Brigade. That's also very strong. Or you might just get a, a Dobatana Bomber against a, a full row. And that's, again, very insane. And uh, you might not have a Dobatana Bomber in your deck. Uh, of course, you don't have it if you're running an Elven Scout and getting a Bomber. But, like, with that, uh, you have that. And uh, it is a good type of random, in a way. <clears throat> because it gives you control. However but over a wide range of possibilities. So it's definitely less reliable. And it doesn't feel as great for the opponent, because if you're running, for example, an Elven Scout, then you're suddenly basically playing every single bronze in the Square Tail faction. Your opponent has to consider every single one of them, because you could play playing any of them. And your opponent needs to consider that, and having such a wide range of possibilities, and this is not even the most extreme example, <clears throat> not, by a, not by a long shot, uh, often just results in your opponent playing against uh, none of them, because you just can't play around so many. Like, you're just not gonna play your Vetter? Like, of course you will. Or you try to play around the Bomber, but there are some Pike Technicians as well, so what are you gonna play around? Like, I just tried to set up a big row to get right by the Mamber or Pipe Technician. So that's that's a bit of a problem. Your, your opponent's gonna struggle to play around such a wide range of possibilities. Except if you have, like... Especially if you have access to all the niche counters. And it's gonna be kind of hard to get, get away with stuff. And even you can't uh, uh, rely on your own card. But you can just try to keep that in mind. Oh, I might just get that from Create. And that is where the depth comes from. Because a uh, create does add depth to the game. It's not pointless. It's it's in your control. Of course, uh, your the choices you're presented with are not in your control. But what you choose is in your control. And when you play the card is in your control as well. <clears throat> and uh, create is not the only way to go about choices. That's most certainly true. Uh, for example, we got Monster Nest here. Which offers you 8 choices. Arrakis Drone and uh, Foglet is just dumb, but the other cards, uh, Arrakis Behemoth, Barbagazi, uh, Ancient Foglet, Go, Drowner, um, and the Rot Fiend, these are all uh, usable cards. Of course, you're not gonna use all of them in one archetype, but like, you can use most of them, like two, two or three of them in, in some archetypes. And uh, th th this way, like this card gives you uh, smart choices uh, that you can use. But, for example, when we uh, compare it to the Divana Runestone, uh, which has access to all uh, Monster Silvers, and we even consider the fact that you have access to 8 cards, of course you don't want most of them, uh, with the Monster Nest, but with this we see that, oh, right off the bat, we have access to a lot more, and uh, some of them can be quite savage, if you just surprise your opponent with it, like, surprise lock, <clears throat> this can override the Vetter, this can eat the great swords, for example. That's that's good. Of course, surprise better counter. That's always great. But also, there could be a low end to this. 
We get a Vivas. We can get like Vivas, Vispas, plus Sheetul of Virgum with nothing to eat in the deck. That's pretty bad. Now you just got a, a six power silver. And uh, that's it. You're pretty sad about that. So, yeah. High end, you can definitely get into niche answers. But uh, you can also get a little bit screwed. And it's, it's more swingy, I suppose. And... Uh, and this is not unique to random cards, and I think this is the most imp one of the most important uh, uh, facts to demonstrate is that one of the most complained cards recently was well that that didn't even release was Roach Merciless. It was uh, proposed as a six power uh, unit that destroys the face down ambush enemy and draws a card. Now that basically translates to it's either it's gonna lose the game as a six power unit, or or just basically wins you the game uh, by itself. <clears throat> now even with that, it would be probably a below average card because where the hell are you gonna run into ambush enemies against Koyatel only? That's it against Koyatel only. If not, you're just mulliganing away. Even if the Koyatel has it, you might not have Roach Merciless. I suppose. This would have kept uh, ambushes out of the meta. Right now, it's it's not really a, a relevant card. But the point is, this was a very polarized card. Either it it could be extremely strong, and that's how create cards could feel. If you just get the right thing, you can easily get twenty plus points, even with bronze cards like the Alvin Scout, and uh, even with the. Uh, you can get, for example, a spheres. Uh, that that's really good. So if you get this uh, with the Nail of Guardian Runestone, then you completely shut down the the Necker deck, or maybe like bullying back some cards, and you can definitely get some or just lock. You have access to a lot of options, and <clears throat> your opponent or or even Peter, like I can just really go over like a lot of these cards are extremely strong, and. Uh, in the in the right circumstances, and your opponent is gonna struggle like hell to play around them. Like, how do you play around it? Often the best way to to go against uh, like uh, like create is just to like ignore it. And if you get hit, you get hit. That's it. That's all you can do. And uh, I believe good randomness uh, definitely offers you control. That create does. And increases depth. That crate does again. It, it increases the depth because it makes you think about all the options. But in a way it goes a little bit too far. It, uh, it gives you too many options in a way. And uh, I suppose it a little bit struggles a bit more to working went This whole uh, crate mechanic. Than that I've, I've seen in other games implemented. <clears throat> And of course, like every kind of randomness will increase variance. Uh, that is, uh, that is just a given. I don't know if we should like really talk about Uma, but this would be the this this is a great example of a uh, great gone wrong if we take this card seriously, because it has so many options that even the one who's playing it can't rely on it at all. You just you just don't know. It's just total total crapshoot, and the one who's Play, playing around it certainly has no idea what the hell is gonna get well what the hell is gonna hit him so this card is just just random at this point it may as well be just play a random gold unit it just the wide of uh, the range of possibilities is just uh, too wide to be relied upon and uh, there are definitely some uh, questionable random cards in the game. But I do think uh, Crate's approach uh, to randomness is uh, preferable. In a way, it's 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 uh, working worse because a lot of the cards are just can be extremely strong in the right circumstances. You get a better counter, wow, win the game. You get swears against the Necro decks. Win the game. A seer put back stuff that could be again extremely strong. So you can get some extremely strong options, like niche options that you wouldn't necessarily put in your deck, but with, with but with the uh, but with the runestone or with crate, you have it. 
And when you have it, it's extremely strong. <clears throat> and it just feels bad. Like, it, you can just really pinpoint to that point of the game where you're just like, Wow, something random happened and I got completely savagely destroyed. But there are other cards as well that are random. Like, for example, we got Arcaspore here. Move to a random row. And you might argue that, oh, that sometimes doesn't matter, but that still makes it pointless and dumb. Sometimes it matters, you just jump into weather, deal one damage to a random enemy on third start. Sometimes it may not matter, but sometimes it very much does. You might hit, you might just wound units against the curse stack. You might just uh, hit uh, armor. You might hit uh, people in the weather that would die. You might hit uh, great swords, uh, raging berserkers. Uh, dwarf marauders, there could be so many things. Also, when he dies, same bullshit. You might just kill... Say, same, same, same crap. You might just uh, kill something that has one power. And wasting free damage. So, Archispore, terrible. So, why this card is, is less uh, complained about than Crate? I personally believe it's because it doesn't have that high of a ceiling. As Crate can possibly have. It's not gonna uh, suddenly just conjure up some kind of a uh, possibly game winning uh, uh, solution. It just does very what it does in a very dumb way. It's random. It, it does nothing. It does nothing to give you control. It does nothing to uh, add depth. It just adds variance. And this is not a good way to add randomness, I believe. At least, not my preference. <clears throat> I can say that. And I suppose the question is always, uh, what are you comfortable with? Where do we draw the line? Are you okay with pointless random? That adds nothing, but variance? Uh, or, or, I don't know how create should be. Because, ultimately, like it has access to a lot of cards, and I suppose it's just gonna continue to be uh, troublesome, especially if we have those niche counters, because it does make the niche counters, in a way, not work like how they're supposed to. Like for example, like you, if if there is a Necker deck out there, like, and if it's extremely popular, then you might put in spheres just to guarantee that you have spheres. But if it's not that popular, you might just say like, okay, I'm gonna run into the Necker deck sometimes. Sometimes I'm just gonna RNG into my spheres. Of course, that's not reliable, but that's still like that's still a possibility. And like when you get it, like it's gonna increase your win rate against that deck. Like every time you get it, you win instantly, and that matters uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> so I suppose to reiterate my main point is uh, that Crate offers you control and depth, but uh, it's really guilty of having a big gap between the, the low end and the high end of the outcomes. The high end can be really high and just can feel very obvious, but other cards, other random cards, are, are just as guilty of uh, making your games more random, but Perhaps in a less obvious way. But crate, most of the crate cards we got right now, or maybe all of them, uh, depending on your preference, uh, have such a wide range of possibilities that, uh, that the opponent oftentimes, or even you kind of struggle to, uh, you kind of struggle to set up into them. A little bit, but the opponent definitely struggles because, for example, if you have a Roostone, then you have all the silvers from that faction. If you have the Elven uh, Scout, you have all the silvers from Squirtel. <clears throat> so you, your opponent can can play around all of that. Probably not. So his best choice is probably just to, yeah, I'm just gonna ignore it and. Uh, what happens, happens. However, other random cards are kind of guilty of being pointless, and this this criticism can definitely go to create cards, because if they offer a too wide range of possibility that you even you can even you struggle to set it up, 
and definitely the opponent's the, on the opponent side it can definitely feel more pointless that it just happens and it hits you and you just lost and uh, it just feels it just feels pointless you, you don't want to lose the game because like oh he just got something that randomly crushes me and uh, yeah the game has like very niche counters that only really makes sense that if you like for example swears that already makes sense if you are actually willing to pay the price of running it into your deck but if you just like randomly get it or like Vrihid Brigade you have the very strong single uh, single counter but but if you are not uh, but if you don't have to have that nine power dude in your deck you don't have to mulligan it away when it's not relevant then you just have it when when it's relevant you might just like draw into it with uh, Elven Scout and you just pick it and it's great for you and of course, like these kind of random cards don't offer you any control or depth, so I wouldn't really uh, call them great. They just add variance. That's their only purpose. But uh, crate cards are, are definitely problematic as well. But they would be less problematic if uh, with like less uh, swingy niche cards. They are just insane. Uh, in the right circumstances <clears throat> and I suppose their pool is is pretty wide I'm not sure how they should be changed or or even if they are a good fit for the game I do like playing with them in the arena but uh, I, I suppose they can be annoying at times I suppose if you just want some if you don't mind uh, randomness uh, dictating the outcome of the games you might be okay with them but a lot of players who again want the games to matter uh, want skill to matter more, uh, might find them frustrating. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, tell me what you think, and uh, see you next time.